first of all, thank you for the uh, Steel Orbis team for the invitation uh, for today's session. I'm very pleased to be here as we are running out of time. So I just try to be as brief as possible uh, for, the, for the presentation. Um, the presentation will be in three parts. First, I will just give you a couple of words about NLMK group. Then we, I will just try to explain the market condition of Russian steel industry and economy. And the last part will be about the, the vision of NLMK, at least for the export steel and trying to understand how we are reacting during the period like pandemic period this year. Okay, a couple of words about NLMK. Uh, NLMK is the number one producer in Russia in terms of <clears throat> crude steel production. Uh, NLMK is among the top 20 global steel producer and it has a strong position on domestic and global markets. Uh, NLMK is number one in global slabs trade and it's top five in electrical steel grain oriented production. We have a balanced and diversified production chain. Uh, we have a vertical integration, uh, steel production in Russia, but also downstream in uh, Europe, in US and in Russia. Uh, it is one of the most diversified steel makers globally. We have dif different geography in operations part. We have different kind of product portfolio and customer bases on uh, belonging to more than 70 countries. It is also one of the most profitable global steel producer and it has investment grade rating from Moody's, Standard and Poor's and Fitchings. Fitch. Looking at the geography where we produce and where we are, facilities are, as you can see from the map, uh, mainly we are producing in, in Russia, in Lipas factory, it's the the steel production and flat production and uh, slab production has been done in Lipes factory. In Kaluga and Urals, we produce mostly long products and we, we steel in Russia, we produce grain oriented electrical steel. Uh, we have Stolinsky for the iron ore production and Altai Cox for the coke production in Russia. Our, in our subsidiaries in, in Europe, uh, Belgium, Denmark, Italy, uh, and France, we have um, rerollers re for the hot roll coils and galvanized and plates. In Russia, uh, in, in US, we have two mills in, in Indiana and in Pennsylvania for the uh, two rolling mills for hot rolling coils and uh, uh, hot tip galvanized. And last, uh, we have in India, a slitting uh, steel service center for grain oriented. As you can see, we are the most uh, self-sufficient uh, steel producers. 65% uh, of the energy is is, done, is produced in our within the within the group. 65% of scrap is produced within the group. In pellets, iron ore, and coke is almost 100% self-sufficient. The capacity of the uh, of the full production is mostly 70% uh, is for the finished steel. It, it includes uh, <clears throat> subsidiaries in, in Europe and US, and uh, almost 30% is, is semis and the uh, iron ore. Uh, okay, it's a Russian market during pandemic uh, year 2020. It's, it's, it has been affected very similar like, like the, the previous presentations, but just the um, the effect has been uh, uh, less thanks to the uh, like, thanks to the state-owned business in country em employment and the supporting of the government measures, the, the, which was roughly two to two point five of the total GDP of the country. But even though the the, the GDP was just dropped, that's the forecast, almost five percent in 2020, and the capital investment has dropped almost ten percent. Uh, construction, which is re very much related with steel industry in, in Russia, is, is dropped almost 6%. And the real disposable income was, has dropped 5.9% in 2020 during the uh, period. But the, 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 one of the main reasons, of course, was, was also the oil prices, which, which, which dropped significantly because of the pandemic period. 
Uh, but we have some uh, positive feed uh, vision for the next years. For the uh, when we see all the key indicators, um, starting from 2012 to uh, 2020 and the next three years in, in, in ahead for us, we see that the, the forecast, at least for, for the next year and the, the following three years, we have a very much positive um, uh, vision and expectation. Uh, as you can see, the GDP rates for the next year is, is going to be uh, higher than the uh, pre-pandemic period. So that's that's the good news, at least for the industry, um, which is really much related. And the construction, as you can see, is also after the huge drop in 2020, the, the expectation is, is going to be about uh, 3% for the next three years in a row. So that's that's the general expectation. Of course, it's, it's also in line and related with the oil prices expectation, which has already started to rise significantly in recent months. And the demand and the government investments in, in infrastructure projects for the following years. Uh, when we look at the steel demand by industry in Russia, it's as you can see from the pie, it's mostly from the, com comes from the construction and tubes and pipe production. Um, which is roughly 90% uh, of the total uh, steel demand. And when we split uh, the steel demand in flats, it's roughly 40% and the long products uh, consumption and the demand is roughly 60%. It's, it's very much in line what we see in Turkey actually. But of course the, the construction and the um, pipe production is, is much higher than, than Turkey. Uh, in terms of uh, total steel production, in crude steel production in, in Russia, which was 72 million tons roughly in, in last year, uh, <clears throat> we see that uh, the apparent steel usage um, in, in, in 2020, um, in the last 12 months, including the three quarters of this year and last quarter of last year, we see the apparent steel usage has not uh, dropped significantly. So we have a very similar a steel consumption um, is apparent steel usage in Russia, where we have a stable or even even slightly increasing market share of, of an LMK uh, from the from that uh, consumption part. And the, the important part that we can see is that the steel um, uh, consumption goes to the uh, mostly on the flat products and uh, losing some shares on the <clears throat> tube uh, production uh, segment. The 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 steel industry is, is under control of top four producers uh, in Russia, which represents roughly 80% of the uh, steel output. And the capacity expansion has already re re rationalized uh, during these years, which was with, with some increase of the, of the capacity or maintenance, etc. So we don't expect additional capacity increase for the upcoming years. In terms of steel capacity utilization rate, I can tell that uh, the, there was a, a significant dif difference in the last five years um, among the global average utilization rate versus uh, Russian steel uh, capacity utilization, uh, utilization rate. But in, in uh, starting from 2018, uh, the, the rate, uh, rate is, is more or less stable in Russia and uh, is equal where the global average is there at 8%. And we don't expect that there will be a huge drop um, in 2020 as well. When we go in details with the products, um, um, in hot roll coil market, we can see that um, um, there's an increase in, in, in last year, 2019. And in the, in the first three quarters of this year, we see that the, the trend is more or less similar. So we don't see a, a significant drop that we, we expect that the, the market will be even higher than the, the previous year. And in terms of market share, we as an LMK has increased our market share from 70% to 20% this year. For coated products, the, the market will be uh, slightly higher than uh, last year, and um, the, the market share will be uh, equal a bit lower than uh, last year uh, for NLMK. For cold roll, it's, it's stable market, uh, roughly 3.5 million tons per year. And we have, uh, we have increased our market share from 30% to 34% uh, within 2020. And PPGI market uh, last 
last product that we produce is uh, the market is roughly three, uh, 2.3 million tons per year. And as you can see that we end up 2020 almost a stable position. For long products in Russia, we can see that the construction is still um, uh, is, is still a demanding uh, market in, in Russia in 2020. The market will, will be stable like uh, 2019 with roughly 8 million tons, where hardware and wire road production will also stable um, you know, within this year. So we don't see a big um, uh, drop in the, in the market in terms of consumption in Russia. Of course, about the uh, the prices, uh, as you all know, that it's a very uh, volatile market, especially recently. But um, when we see uh, the the slab price, it's a, one of the indicators that we always follow. That the, the prices, as um, especially for export, the price has started to be recovered uh, since July, and there's a starting from the demand from Russia, uh, from from Asia, from Far East. And uh, the afterwards, uh, the, the good gradual resumption of the global economy, especially on the Black Sea region, including Turkey. And the we can easily say that the export slab prices, just to give you an example, is has has already surpassed pre-COVID level in September, and it's it's hovering since then, and it's still increasing significantly in line with all the slab uh, uh, steel prices. Uh, this graph on the right side is, is showing us um, the, the price, uh, uh, domestic steel price in Russia in, in US dollars and rubles. So as you know that the, the market in, in Russia has been um, has done in, in rubles. So if you compare that uh, the prices, uh, which, which is, which is uh, locally uh, transferred in, in rubles, there's some certain periods where there's a big um, difference between US dollars and rubles, where there are certain uh, de uh, devaluation in, in rubles, especially when the oil price has dropped significantly during this year. But in long run, it, it always overlaps, as, as you can see in the previous year. So in, in, in rebar, it's more or less the same that you the, the, the uh, prices in rubles and the US dollars has changed significantly during those periods. Uh, and a couple of words about our strategy for the export. The export is a very important area for us, for LMK and mostly for Russian producers. So um, uh, I will just try to give some examples from the from the window of, of an LMK, which I believe represents most of the uh, Russian steel producers. We have a very well diversified geography in terms of sales. Uh, with different kind of regions in more than 70 countries that we are serving. So we can reallocate big sales volume very quickly, which makes us a very agile company. And that was very important, especially during pandemic period. I, I believe that was one of the most key areas that the steel producers and the traders were uh, looking for during this period. Du due to the strong presence in these key export markets, including, as you can see, at, apart from Russia, uh, we have subsidiaries in Europe and uh, uh, US, but uh, not only those those uh, places where we produce steel, but also where we trade steel, like Middle East, like South America and Central America. I will just give you an example, which represents very clearly how we uh, reacted during this uh, pandemic period, especially during the first wave when uh, during the when we see the first um, results of the, of the pandemic in, in April, uh, you can see on the on the graph on the left side for the first seven months of last year and the first uh, seven months of the 2020 that there's a huge di difference between uh, the the product um, uh, diversification. Uh, there was a big, big uh, uh, player during this period, which was Far East, especially China, where we were able to divert the, the sales to that region uh, when the economy was not functioning actually in the other regions, including Russia, Turkey, and Europe. So that was the, the trigger how we were able to give the service uh, and we, we didn't interrupt the business that we were providing during this period. And starting from April, May, June, and July, you can see that roughly 30, more than 30% of our sales 
has been shifted immediately to those areas where the, the economy was recovering. And uh, uh, last but not least, some words about the um, our export strategy in Turkey. As you can see that we have uh, started our NLMK Turkey office since 20, 2017 with some sales team uh, and operational team with uh, sales and after sales. And um, you can see the graph uh, showing that the, the, the results of the trade that's been done for the semi products, including pig iron, uh, slabs, and billets, uh, gradually increase uh, the trade volume, and the flat products, including uh, hot rolled coils, cold rolled, uh, and electric steel, in recent years, where we end up with most mostly more than 2.2 million tons per year as a, one of the biggest uh, steel trader in Turkey. Uh, that's all. Thank you very much uh, for the attention.